Hello everyone, and welcome back to another figure review. Today, we're taking a look at the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan Son Goku, Legendary Super Saiyan. Arguably the Goku of all time, and probably one of Tamashi's best, if not greatest, releases for the Dragon Ball line, up to this point anyways. Fans absolutely lost their minds when Tamashi released the promotional photos for the figure, and I don't think I could have pre-ordered the figure any quicker myself when orders finally opened on Big Bad Toy Store. However, when collectors started getting the figure in hand, they noticed one glaring issue, mainly the fact you could see where Goku's wife beater would be depending on what type of lighting you had the figure in. Me personally, I don't think it was that bad as we like to remember. Good grief, he's naked! Okay, maybe just a little. But honestly, I'd rather take a Goku needing a tan over the original 3.0 trunks any day of the week. That said, is the figure still worth it almost a year later? You kidding me? Absolutely. Pick this up as soon as you can. Like, seriously, as soon as you can. But for those of you who need a little more persuasion, I've got you covered. For you returning viewers out there, you'll have noticed that I've teased doing this review for some time now, but I wanted to wait for the opportune time to do so while attempting to not neglect my backlog, which is still backlogged, but that's neither here nor there. But I figured with the release of the full power of Riza, now was the right time to do a review for Goku. Full disclaimer though, this is not the reissue. If you're wondering what's changed between the two releases, it's mainly the chest that everyone complained about. So with that said, let's get into the actual review. Starting with the packaging, we have an image of Goku shouting in rage at Frieza mentioning that Earthling. Much like Goku's blinding chest, the box itself is done in bright yellow to complement Goku's Super Saiyan hair. We do get some manga style paneling in the background, with the right side of the box continuing those panels. The back side of the box gives us a look at what all comes bundled with Goku, such as his Kamehameha, extra bang piece, and hair sculpt. Also, I don't know what it is about the image of Goku on the left, but his face looks hella burnt. Here's a look at the left side of the box. A quick look at the top. And bottom to round out the packaging. For the pain detail on Goku, this is by far one of the better looking figures Tamashii Nations has put out. Given the fact that I'm a little late to the game and there have been a few releases since this Goku, I'd argue the most recent release that's comparable in terms of detail would be the Full Power Frieza. But unlike Full Power Frieza though, Goku here is missing some much needed shading on the skin. The rest of the figure does benefit from shading in his hair sculpts and tattered gi. The colors Tamashi used for what's left of his outfit are nicely done, with a lighter orange in the front and a darker orange everywhere else. The blue is consistent for his wristbands, tattered undershirt, belt, and boots which have some nice paint apps to give them the iconic look. As far as the detail goes, I love the battle damage look. As I stated with Final Battle Jiren, we need more battle damaged characters in the line. When the first 2.0 mold made its debut in the form of the Warrior Awakening Goku, it was a breath of fresh air having a figure with greater range and a more stylized look. Here, this takes it even further beyond. Goku has scarring all over his body and scratches in his clothing to really showcase the fact that he's been through HFIL and back. His clothing is done in such a way that it makes it look like he's against the wind and not just in a static pose. It's executed so perfectly that Goku looks dynamic no matter how you pose him. He could be standing still or ready to bust out his meteor smash against Frieza, and he'd still look badass. And for the face sculpts, these are done perfectly, and Tamashi has done a great job capturing the look of the 90s animation with the print work. I know I'm getting ahead of myself when it comes to the accessories, but they're just so expressive and full of life that it's hard not to talk about them. The only thing I'm bummed about is the fact we didn't get more than what we got. Well, initially anyways. My only real gripe with the detail that's not the chest is the same issue I had with Frieza. No line work for the battle damage. For a price point of roughly 65 USD, we are already getting a lot with this figure. But I've also seen what the community can do. And by them simply filling in those lines, it makes a world of a difference. Noble Flame on Reddit did some work on his copy, and it looks pretty good. Link in the description if you want to check it out in detail. As I've already stated, we get a lot for the price point. Goku here is going to come bundled with two head sculpts in total, an extra set of bangs for the default head sculpt, four faces in total, six sets of hands, and a Kamehameha effect piece. The dude is literally loaded. For the faces we get, the default stern face, a smirking face, a teeth gritting face, and a shouting face that just screams you're a fool for not buying this figure, or freezes the one that's a fool. Here's a quick look at those faces with the extra bang piece, and on the extra head sculpt. And if the four face plates weren't on enough, Full Power Frieza does come with an extra one. And here's what it looks like. It's pretty good. Not including the fists that come attached, we get two splayed out hands, two sets of Kamehameha hands, one without pegs, 
and the other set with pegs to use with the Kamehameha. Two somewhat clinched hands, maybe for charging in an opponent, and two martial arts style hands. So I didn't touch on the hands in the paint detail section, but these 3.0 hands are amazing. They look so much better than the generic Goku or Vegeta hands that we've been getting for almost a decade or more now. They too have battle damage, and I truly appreciate the extra mile Tamashii Nations took on these to make them unique to Goku here. But lastly, the Kamehameha. This one is done in translucent blue with some white shading here and there to really make it stand out. It's not as nice as the white lightning or burst stream of destruction we get with the Monster Arts Blue Eyes White Dragon, but it gets the job done. Side note, if you have that laying around, it pegs into the hands no problem. You can use it for a super Kamehameha. Yeah. So, say you have this Goku in hand, or you're at least considering it, and you're not quite satisfied with it like the mad lad that you are. What if you're wanting a little more? Well, what if I told you the aftermarket is taken of this figure like Stink on Yajirobe? It's true. There are a few modifications you can do to this figure to really take him to the next level. Besides the chest issue, there are a few folks out there, myself included, that did not care for how low Goku's head sat down on his neck, or thought his torso was just a little too short. Some custom fabricators out there heard our cries and quickly went to work developing longer neck pegs and torso extensions to make Goku look taller. Now, I didn't purchase the ab extension from AFFM Customs, but I did buy some new neck pegs from D-Star Toys and quickly modified my original Goku. It was a subtle change, but a change that made a noticeable difference. And here's what an unmodified Goku looks like, next to the one that's modified. It looks good and all. However, I have noticed that over time the neck joint for the one that's modified has gotten loose on me because the center of gravity has shifted upwards, and now that weight wants to act against the neck more and that's made me reluctant to do the mod again. Now, as far as kits out there that you can pick up to alter his overall appearance, you have some options. What I've got in front of you here are two such kits from Air Studios. The first is a full blue undershirt to create a custom Goku that looks like he just transformed into a Super Saiyan. It is made of a softer material, similar to his lower half or Beast Gohan shirt, but as soft as it may be, it does limit his range of motion. Despite that, it looks solid. It is a bit of a pain to put on though, and I do recommend removing the arms, separating Goku at the waist, and heating up the shirt in some hot water to make it more flexible. As for the other kit, it's designed to mimic the Warrior Awakening Goku. Putting this on is straightforward. Separate Goku at the waist. Pardon my technical difficulties there, but as I was saying, separate Goku at the waist, Fish is right arm through the hole. Correction, fish is right arm through the right hole. I swear that's never happened to me. Then, with your belt and tattered orange gi assembled, you're ready to start combining them. These pieces are all keyed, so just line the holes up when reconnecting, and this will help keep the pieces from moving on you. The belt is keyed, but I do recommend trimming off just a little piece of it, as if you don't, you're gonna have issues trying to get the peg into the hole. Now, if you're not a fan of the hair sculpt, you can find some alternatives. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the hair sculpt's design right out of the box, as it looks more accurate to the Dragon Ball Super Future Trunks saga retelling of Goku vs. Frieza. Recustom has a set that you can pick up on Omnime that's more accurate to the Namek saga. And there's also a set on 5k toys made by DCG Toys that doesn't look half bad either. So again, if you're not satisfied with how Goku comes out of the box, there is a multitude of things you can do with this figure to make him your own, and that's what I love about this. So, you have options. All right, it's time to get into the articulation here for the legendary Super Saiyan, Son Goku. Now, if you've watched any of my reviews on my channel, you'll know that anytime I bring up this figure, I sing nothing but high praises about him. He articulates well right out of the box, and he has no excessive tightness or stiffness to him because he's lubed up perfectly from the factory. Giggity. And I've also gone on record as saying that this is the definitive shirtless Goku. Heck, I would even go as far as to say he's the definitive 3.0 figure in the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball line. So, let's go ahead and take a closer look at Goku and have him put my money where my mouth is and let his actions speak for himself. Starting the head and working our way down, Goku is going to be on a double ball peg that allows him to look up about EA high and look down about a little more than neutral. Once you start taking the neck into consideration, Goku is going to be able to look up very nicely, a little bit more than what it was just a minute ago. And... 
he's going to be able to look down without separating his face from his head sculpt. He's going to be able to bury that chin into his chest, no problem. And because of the double ball peg in the neck system they have on this figure, he is able to rotate that head all the way around very nicely, and he does it effortlessly. Now, that means you can get him into some really snarky, cocky poses, especially if you pose him up next to Frieza. Looks really good. For the shoulders, Goku here is going to be on a ball and socket system that allows him to rotate a full 360. T-pose greater than 180 degrees. You're going to have upper bicep swivels that are solid, and you're going to have some double-jointed elbows. So you can get some Macho Man poses going on. You want to work with me, Goku? Yeah, there you go. Just like that. <laughs> Looks really good. And for the wrists, they are going to be on a ball hinge that, depending on how that hinge is facing, you know, you get more range out of it. And something else to note, the wristbands do rotate. Very nice. Now, the last thing for the arms and the shoulders are these wonderful butterfly joints. And these work perfectly the way they do because they are borrowed from the Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Very nice. You know, before, when I showed off the Ultra Instinct Toyotaro Edition Goku, that was about as far as he could go. Your traditional shirt shirt wearing Goku <laughs> with the full gi could probably bring the arms in about that far, right? The Kamehameha was cutting it pretty close. Now, I mean, you could get the Kamehameha and then some. And that's because the way that these are sculpted here, the cut in the torso makes the world of a difference or makes all the difference that the figure needs to be able to articulate the way he does. So Super Saiyan 4 paved the way for that. And this guy just builds upon it and it's amazing. Now for the torso, the upper ab section, Goku is going to be able to lean back about that far. And that's because the way his back is sculpted, it digs into the floating piece of plastic here. I don't know why they designed it that way, but it does limit his articulation leaning back. You can crunch forward about that far. You do get some tilt left to right, and you do get some rotation up top, which is very nice. Now, when you take the waist into consideration, Goku can crunch forward that far, and he can lean back pretty darn good. It Honestly, it's still not the same, but it's still good, right? Now, you can rotate the waist at full 360, and his belt here, ooh, his belt here is going to be a floating piece, so you can move it independently. It's not bad. Let's try and get back into focus real quick, Goku. There we go. So this rotates and moves on its own. And this here is pegged into the belt, and it does swivel back and forth. Now, if you thought these were impressive, wait till you see the legs. Goku here is going to be able to kick up about that high, so greater than 90 degrees. And then when you take the sculpted buttocks into consideration of being softer material, right? Like you can, you can kind of hear it, right? Goku can kick back greater than 180 degrees. Well, greater than 90 degrees, but it's greater than 180 all the way around, right? Right. That makes sense. So. This is very impressive for the figure, and I absolutely love it. Now, would I keep that pose? No, I wouldn't keep that pose very long just because you do take the chance of potentially having that contort or conform to that shape because you're pushing it out, and plastic does want to conform to whatever shape it's in if it stays that way for a very long time. So, for the knees, they are double-jointed. We do have an upper thigh swivel, and you do have a little bit of a rotation in the leg area because they are a uh, ball and socket system, much like the, at least the socket is on the leg and the ball peg is in the crotch. 
but it still rotates and then you do get some rotation from the upper thigh. And then lastly, we have the feet. They are on a hinge system that can move forward or back. So right now it's all the way forward and tilt it down. And then if you want to push it back, that's what it looks like. I would use this to kind of sturdy Goku up, sturdy him up. So whenever you pose him, he's not going to want to take a, a nosedive. Because for whatever reason, when you have it like this, he's a little more likely to not want to hold that pose. I think it's just because the upper part of the boot rubs into the... Or, um, doesn't rub into it, but it makes contact with the tassel and it doesn't make it stay leveled. So you kind of have to finagle it just a tad to get it right. That said though, the ankle rockers are pretty solid. And you can rock them out side to side like that pretty good. And it also two moves. And then lastly, the toe hinge is greater than 45. So overall, Does Goku here still stand out as the definitive 3.0 Goku? <sighs> Absolutely. I mean, he's, what, one of only two 3.0 Gokus that we have, but we're fixing to get the Daima Goku uh, later next year. But if you were to ask me, is this the definitive 3.0 figure? The answer is yes. This is, when I think of Goku, this is how I picture him. Shirtless, battered, beaten, scarred, and still going at it. And that's why I love the Frieza and Goku fight so much. It's because that's my childhood, man. This is this is 90s Dragon Ball right here. At least Dragon Ball Z anyways. Don't get me wrong, though. The Goku is still solid, and I still like the 3.0 trunks. I think the 3.0 trunks, and this is the reissue, by the way. The reissue made the world of a difference for the figure, but I still have to go with the Goku just because of everything he represents. The Trunks is a very solid figure, don't get me wrong. But if I had to uh, you know, suggest a figure to somebody, this one. Anyways, let's move on to the comparisons and then go from there. For the comparisons, here's Goku next to Super Saiyan Son Gohan, the fighter who surpassed Goku. The 24,000 power level Vegeta with the latent power trunks arms. Full power Frieza. And the true legendary Super Saiyan, Broly. So you're going to be limited on head swaps, and that's probably the biggest bummer about this Goku. If you want to swap this hair sculpt over to something like the 3.0 Goku that Demon Aqua Fit put out, then you're going to have to find a custom neck peg for it, or vice versa. D-Star Toys used to carry them, but they have since sold out, and I haven't seen a second run of them. What's also worse is that this head will not fit onto your other 2.0 bodies. So for the hell of it, here's what this head sculpt will work on, Team Gohan and Super Trunks. But for the other way around, it doesn't really work. Goku's neck is just a little too swole to allow it. A bit of a mucker. But anyways, <laughs> you, you want to kit bash, this is what Goku looks like. So for my closing thoughts on Goku here, there's not much else I can add here that I haven't already said. But when I think early 90s Dragon Ball, or in this case the early 2000s for us Western folk, this is it. This is how I picture Goku. I think we can all remember our first time watching Goku turn Super Saiyan. He had played his final trump card in the form of the Spirit Bomb to defeat Frieza, everyone around him was celebrating his hard-fought victory, only to have it cut short with Piccolo taking a near-fatal blow intended for Goku, and Krillin being popped like a weasel in front of Goku's eyes. And from there, the rest is history. My biases aside for Broly, I believe that the figure in front of us is probably the best in the line. And I believe that's a sentiment many of us collectors share. Mato Okamoto, the product planner for the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball line, and the person responsible for giving us this amazing figure, provided his personal thoughts when asked what his favorite figure was, and summarizes how most of us feel about this Goku. 
I'm really attached to Super Saiyan Son Goku Legendary Super Saiyan because it was the first version of Goku I created from scratch after I became product planner for the Dragon Ball series. While Goku has lots of different outfits and forms, this figure really takes all the boxes for me. From how cool he looked when I first saw him to his beefy, crispy outlined muscles, there's no doubt that this is my favorite version of Goku, and I love this figure especially because it represents all the top quality modeling, mobility, and attention to detail that SH Figure Arts has brought to its Dragon Ball series of products. That comes directly from the SH Figupedia, and no, I haven't forgotten about the deal I made with y'all regarding the reading of the Figupedia. I've just had a lot on my plate, and the backlog grows with each release. It's coming though, I promise. But Akimoto describes to us perfectly why so many of us were drawn to this Goku figure. So if you have the chance to pick this figure up, do it. I think for all that comes packaged with this release, the amazing articulation that he offers, and the third party support, he's easily the definitive SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball release. And that's going to bring us to the end of the review. I want to thank you, the viewer, for making it to the end. If you haven't already, kindly hit the like button and subscribe as it helps me out and keeps the channel growing. Plus, I've got other reviews up and more to come. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on this release. Do you believe he's the Goku of all time? Does he make your top 10? Or are you just not sold on this release? I'd love to hear it all. But as always, this has been Delete Reviews, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.